Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, and live the life we love. Now, yoga is for stressful times as well as for peaceful times. But I have to tell you, I am like the wizard in the James Thurba stories that's functioning under a curse. And the wizard says to the king, listen, sire, I can give you advice, but I'm functioning under a curse. And the king says, what's the curse? He says, well, 50% of the time, what comes out of my mouth is the gospel truth. And 50% of the time, drivel comes out of my mouth and it's just completely off. And the king says, well, what's the curse? Well, I don't know which 50% of the time it is when I'm speaking to you. So you got to take what I say with a grain of salt and mostly, of course, figure it out yourself, have your own direct experience. I'm coming from the place of what I call cosmic homesickness, like there's a beacon beckoning from the beyond that keeps asking me, are you identified with the struggle to survive or with the joy of being? Well, you got to turn this on. No one can do this for you. As I like to say, you can't farm this out. Although every house, when it's new, is wired for electricity, you have to ask the power company to turn it on, otherwise you don't get any. And of course in yoga, to me, what the real power is, is breathing. Breathing is the main source of spiritual strength, and it causes it to flow more abundantly in your life. Now, although you get turned on to yoga, my teacher used to say, over-enthusiasm is short-lived. Yeah, students would come to class, they'd say, oh, I'm going to come here every day, you know, and then in another week they're gone. So to go faster, you must slow down. Right? Hasten slowly and you'll soon arrive, as the Tibetan yogis used to say. So if you could experience deep intuition in the moment, part of it is going to come from setting up conditions where you could have a peak experience, where it's more likely to happen, with deep goals that you have, that help you contact your untapped potential. Otherwise, I'm sure you've seen other people drift aimlessly, doing the best they can under the circumstances. But yoga is much more than just doing the best you can. It's an exquisite state of balance and rest, reflecting qualities that are both above and below here and something that we could say is beyond. So my teacher always says, you have to build yourself the feelings of freedom, liberation, beauty, infinity. And then when you're supposedly withdrawing from the world, remember, yoga is not just life negating, life renouncing, it's also life engaging. Your contemplation is never an excuse for material carelessness. In fact, you want to bring your consciousness, your awareness, to everything you do. Especially what I call the throwaway actions. The things in your daily life you don't think are spiritual. The things that everybody has to do and it's no big whoop and you do it again and again like the chores. Nobody really wants to continue to throw out the garbage, clean up the dog poop, balance your checkbook, have to do the shopping, have to do the cleaning. And yet, those are the moment-moment moment things where you can find what I call the extraordinary in the extraordinary. So if you're going to do this, I set up a little different background for you to remind you. All the way on the back side of me is the light switch. And I always say, when you wake up in the morning, you have a choice. Flip the switch on. Realize your soul has been returned to you for another day and be glad about it. So you have this up five. Now I know that there are a lot of Americans who say, don't tell me what I want to do, I should do. I'm free to do what I want. All right, I just invite you to turn the switch on. I think you'd enjoy yourself much more if you went around with the switch turned on. And we'd probably have a better interaction if both of us had our switch turned on. The other thing I like to remind everybody is, is the mirrors. There's the small mirror and the big mirror. And the small mirror is the things you do for yourself that are much more ego-oriented, or humanistic in values. Nothing wrong with that, but it's short-sighted because it has such a small scope. But behind that is the big mirror, the mirror where you're reflecting another kind of perspective that includes, incorporates, and goes beyond the perspective of egocentricity. And that's the dharmic values. And if you do that, then you see the Tibetan tanka in the background. 
then all the masters of eternity are there, all the people who have ascended and still have contact with humanity. Because every day they look out over the Buddha fields and they see who's reaching for light. And whoever is, they send them some.